Namo Ramana. Prostrations to Ramana, shining as a self in all beings. We begin the satsang with a prayer by Sapna Ganesh and chanting of Mukta Katraya by Sri Nandukumarji. Dakshinamurti Sarambham Shankara Charya Madhyamam Ramana Charya Paryantam Vande Guru Param Param Vande Guru Param Param Vande Guru Param Param Shuklam Bharadharam Vishnu Sheshivarnam Chatur Bhujam Prasanna Vadanam Dhyayet Sarva Vigno Pashantaye Angikam Bhuvanam Yasya Vachikam Sarva Vangmayam Aharyam Chandra Taradi Tam Namasatvikam Shivam Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Ramanaya Namo Ramana to everyone. Shiva 
chanting of verses from Upadesha Saram by Ashwini Balaji and Uma Shri Pati. Namoramana, we now have Ramananjali music. The first song will be offered by Srimati Radha along with Valla, and the second one by Srimati Pratibha Sundarish. Namoramana to all. Today we are presenting a song by Shri Sadhu Om Swami. The music is by Shri El Krishna. Mire 
This is an English translation based on Sri Ganapati Muni's Chatwarimsha, and the music is set by Dr. Sharda Netrajan. Sages, 
Benediction is no virtue, for it is only natural to the effulgent heart which you are. Oh, Ramana, may your gracious glance be turned once in my direction, so that I may be blessed. Oh, Ramana, Ramana. offered the first one by Savitri Krishnan and Jai Sri Ram Krishnan and the next one by Revati Shankar. Yeah. 
We are meditating on the 27th verse of Sadhashanam. Satya stitirnaha mudeti yatra Tachodhaya sthana gaveshanena Minana nashyed yaditanna nashyed Swatmaikya rupa kathamastu nishtha The eye does not rise in the real state. Search for the source of I dissolves it. How else can one attain the supreme state of one's own self? Attain the self. The supreme state is the one thing which we need to do. When the ego rises, hold on to it. When we pay attention to the ego, it tries to run away. It falls into the source. So we can find the source immediately. To make us get back to the source, the self embodied itself as Ramana to show us how we can also do it. He led a life for 54 years after his enlightenment to make us also realize and give us his own state. I present to you a song by Sadhuam Swami, Kanda translation by RNJ Gopal, music by Vijay Bhaskar. Ahamanu tere ye ramanesha Yeddu gaiva Nartana kaano de jnana mamma Ahamanu tere ye ramanesha Yeddu gaiva Nartana kaano de jnana mamma Idda kade ye iddu Iloka vannu Tannede sede doliva Parameesha namma Idda kade ye iddu Iloka vannu Tannede sede doliva Parameesha namma Kadu tapagai idu Gani siddhatma jnana Sulabha de kai geni do dani amma. Kadu tapa kai do gani siddhat manyana. Sulabha de kai geni do dani amma. Ahamanu tere ye ramanesha. Yeddu gaiva nartana kaanu de jnana amma. Narapashu vagi bandhu namagya jnana tanda 
ಶಿವ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಹೂಲಿಯು ರಮಣನಾಥನಮ್ಮ ನರ ಪಶುವಾಗಿ ಬಂದು ನಮಗೆ ಜ್ಞಾನ ತಂದ ಶಿವ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಹೂಲಿಯು ರಮಣನಾಥನಮ್ಮ ನರ ರೂಪ ದೈವವಿದು ನಿನ್ನಲಿಹ ಅಹಂಕಾರ ನಾಶ ಮಾಡಿ ಸುಖವ ತರುವನಮ್ಮ ನರತು ನರ ರೂಪ ದೈವವಿದು ನಿನ್ನಲಿಹ ಅಹಂಕಾರ ನಾಶ ಮಾಡಿ ಸುಖವ ತರುವನಮ್ಮ ಅಹಮನು ತೆರೆಯೆ ರಮಣೇಶ ಎದ್ದು ಗೈವ ನರ್ತನ ಕಾಣುವುದೆ ಜ್ಞಾನವಮ್ಮ ಕಾಲದೇಶ ನೋಡದೆ ಮಿತಿಯೇ ಇಲ್ಲದೆ ಕರುಣೆಯ ಹರಿಸೋ ಕಲ್ಪ ತರುವಮ್ಮ ಕಾಲದೇಶ ನೋಡದೆ ಮಿತಿಯೇ ಇಲ್ಲದೆ ಕರುಣೆಯ ಹರಿಸೋ ಕಲ್ಪ ತರುವಮ್ಮ ಬಾಲವೃದ್ಧರೆಲ್ಲರ ಪಕ್ವ ಬಲ ಮಾಡುತ್ತ ದೈವಕ್ಕೆ ಅರ್ಪಿಸುವ ಪೂಜನಮ್ಮ ಬಾಲರೂಪ ಬಾಲವೃದ್ಧರೆಲ್ಲರ ಪಕ್ವ ಬಲ ಮಾಡುತ್ತ ದೈವಕ್ಕೆ ಅರ್ಪಿಸುವ ಪೂಜನಮ್ಮ ಅಹಮನು ತೆರೆಯೇ ರಮಣೇಶ ಎದ್ದು ಗೈವ ನರ್ತನ ಕಾಣುವುದೆ ಜ್ಞಾನವಮ್ಮ ಅಹಮನು ತೆರೆಯೇ ರಮಣೇಶ ಎದ್ದು ಗೈವ ನರ್ತನ ಕಾಣುವುದೆ ಜ್ಞಾನವಮ್ಮ ನಮೋ ರಮಣ ನಮೋ ರಮಣ we now have the reading and the sharing by shri nandukumar ji namo ramana in this the book reading segment of our satsang we continue our readings from fresh discoveries western seekers on shri ramana maharshi a compilation by our founder president shri ar natarajan ji we have been reading the account of the devotee suzan written by her daughter monica bos as a brief look back i would like to read some snippets from the account and then go into today's reading uh, on her visit on the first day itself she writes like this once during the morning in the meditation hall the maharishi turned and looked directly at suzan of course the account is by monica bose her daughter once during the morning the maharishi turned and looked directly at suza she would write to us about his wonderful gaze his brilliant eyes shining like stars she was sure that she had found her master she goes on to write as in the morning the mood was rather informal to these people aspiring to attain the highest grades of knowledge the maharshi apparently did not give any discourses he replied to questions when they were put to him usually very succinctly as if to let the one word or the few words he said made their way directly into the understanding of the questioner on the other hand when a young man struggled to grasp what the self was the maharishi with great patience 
guided him through his reasoning until at last he got some glimmering of what the maharishi meant of course the answer to the nature of the self is only to be found on the intuitive level but the breakthrough of intuition can be hampered by faulty reasoning that is where the instructions come and clear the reasoning apart from these exceptions to silence there were long quiet moments when the maharishi said and did nothing but we were more effective in conveying transcendent truth than any lecture or sermon would have been and the last brief portion of our readings from last week she is sent off from the ashram at 6:30 as the women are asked to stay in the uh, town and she is highly highly indignant about this and a great anger rises in her because she has always been <clears throat> angered by this putting down of women so she says she got so angry that she went up the hill and stayed inside one of the caves but what arunachala does to her in that moment is what is captured in this paragraph her anger drove all other thoughts from her mind it was then that she had a vision of arunachala as a hill of fire in its many caves siddhas or realized beings in their pure and invulnerable bodies sat or moved unharmed in the flames in her vision she was taken into the hill and passed through its fire but felt no fear no pain and she saw many worlds existing within the hill in a series of extraordinary revelations of course her anger gets subsided because of this wonderful vision that she sees about arunachala hill we go on to today's reading this is from monica bose hotel the story shifts to what happens to her and her grandmother who are in england at that time and her mother susan is in india and in tirunamalai <coughs> monica bose the author of this book who is writing the account on behalf of susan is a child living in england with her mother jean uh, with her grandmother jean so this account is our life in tirunamalai in september 1940 when the war began to threaten the safety of jean and me in england susan wrote urging us to come to india to support the second world war where germany had started bombing england at that time she told the maharishi about her fears for us and he replied that there was no need to worry as we would be quite safe to the mother bhagwan is assuring that her daughter and her own mother <coughs> will be quite safe soon afterwards susan had a dream in which she saw the maharishi sitting on the threshold of our house in england with one hand raised in the gesture of protection the abhaya asta it did seem to us that we were specially protected during those hazardous days jean she refers to her grandmother by name only jean is the grandmother jean who had been trying for some time to get a passage to india suddenly received notice to embark on a liner that was due to sail from liverpool 3 days later she put the furniture in a storage thinking that we would eventually return to our house but we were to fear that the house was destroyed during the bombing the day that we embarked in liverpool there was a raid on the port but the bombers missed our ship which must have been a target of attack since it was carrying troops as well as civilians yet we made the long journey to india round the cape of good hope without any mishap when we reached bombay 
Suzanne was there to her mother. When we reached Bombay, Suzanne was there to meet, meet us, having driven all the way from the south. She brought us back with her to Tiruvannamalai and to the house in the big street. The very next day, she took us to Shri Ramanashrama to see the Maharishi. Thus, she introduced me straight away to that side of India, which is the most valuable and rewarding, and I am very grateful to her for it. At first, I was a little afraid to come before her great master, about whom she had written so much to us. But when he looked at me, I felt wonderfully safe and happy. He seemed to be infinitely wise and yet completely innocent like a child. I saw in him great sweetness and gentleness. At the same time, I felt his power. I knew that he would continue to protect us. And indeed, both Jean and I felt his protection again quite soon. I, in my difficulties of adjustment in India, where I the grandmother, a couple of years later, at a time when she felt she was losing all sense of purpose in life. The manner in which the Maharishi helped her revealed extraordinary insight. In 1942, two years after the come, when we came to Thiruvannamalai from Madras, it had been decided that I should go to a boarding school in Bangalore. It was the first time that Jean and I were to be separated from each other. And it brought forth to her that I was growing up and would need her less and less in the future. She was so despondent that Suzanne suggested she ask the Maharishi to guide her. When we become purposeless in life, then the despondency sets in. <clears throat> Suzanne suggested that her mother, Jean, ask the Maharishi to guide her. So the next morning, when we went to him, Jean handed the attendant a little slip of paper on which she had written the simple request, please give me your guidance for the future. His spontaneous answer, Bhagavan's spontaneous answer was, go back to your religion. When we read the book, Hill of Fire, we find that much earlier, when the uh, child, Suzanne is there, and her brother is there, then her brother undergoes some illness, and her mother prays, and it is not answered, and in some way, she leaves her religion at that point. Very, very early in the life of Suzanne, Suzanne's mother, Jean, comes out of Catholic uh, belief, <clears throat> at least in her mind, she feels she will not be supported by the religion there. Yes. Strangely to Monica, Bhagavan picks on the point and says, to find purpose of life, go back to your religion, is the spontaneous answer of Bhagavan. This was an amazing answer, because Jean had not informed him or anyone else at the ashram that she had left the religion. That fact was embedded in her past and never brought out not even before the family. Her presence at the ashram did not indicate it either, for there were people of different faiths there. Seeing that the Maharishi's doctrine of self-inquiry could be practiced within the structures of any religion or even without those structures. In fact, the Maharishi very rarely told someone to follow a particular religion, and his advice to Jean was a notable exception. So, to overcome that despondency to that lady who is the grandmother, Bhagavan says, now you may not have the crutch of taking care of your granddaughter and having a purpose for life, then definitely go back to your religion, you will find the true purpose of life. For over 12 years, from 1940 to 1952, I went to Thiruvannamalai from Bangalore, I hope. I went to Thiruvannamalai at least once and sometimes twice a year 
during my school and later college holidays. I loved the place. Our house was in the street of priests, as the big street was known. The sumptuous temple processions with their gold and silver images on their equally precious vehicles drawn on huge temple cars used to pass down the street on feast days, stopping in front of the houses of the chief high priests so that the offering of the light or arati might be made to the deities. I was never bored while in Tirunamalai, a town into which the life of the temple extended in many ways. Number 58, that must be her house number. Number 58 was similar to most of the neighboring houses. In front, there was a wide veranda, part of which was covered by a thatched roof. On this veranda, there were stone benches for sitting and enjoying the cool early morning hours or balmy evening breezes. The massive carved wooden front door opened with a key about 30 centimeters long. One entered into a short passage with rooms to the right and left, which Suzanne, her mother, used for her dispensary. Her mother, of course, was an MD with post doctoral qualifications. She was also a ballerina. <clears throat> One entered the short passage into a short passage with rooms to the right and left, which Suzanne used for her dispensary. After them came two more rooms that served as our bedrooms. When it was not possible for us to sleep on the flat terrace roof above, the passage opened into a large hall divided into three sections by two rows of carved pillars painted a bright primitive blue, the same demon rippling blue that one saw in the temple. Right at the top of the hall, there were small barred windows which gave on to the roof above. Often the monkeys, which used to travel in families, formed from one rooftop to the next on their way from the forest to the hill and back, <coughs> would peer down inquisitively at us through the windows. In the hall, in the left hand side section, between the wall and the first row of pillars, we had placed a piano and some bookshelves. In the central section, a settee, some armchairs, and a small round table to create a drawing room. And in the last section, a plain dining table with chairs. It was quite a different scene in the houses of the neighboring high priests and their families, for from choice, not necessity, they contain practically no furniture nor any decoration, not even on the walls which were there except for the customary row of the sacred pictures. On the far side of our hall, a door led to the back of the house, where surrounded by a veranda, there was an inner courtyard which was open to the sky. And in the middle of the inner courtyard, there grew a sacred tulsi plant. The open courtyard was a replica of the small scale, on a small scale, of the big enclosures in Lord Arunachaleshwara Temple, all in keeping with the religious architectural principle of encompassing within earthen walls the infinite expanse of the Brahman. How nicely she has <coughs> found these things from our culture, that the open courtyards remind us of the Brahman within. <clears throat> Hence, our house was built to be a house of open space, which is what the Maharishi once called the heart. The heart is called as the house of open space they were born sometimes. And she says her own house itself was a house of open space. How nicely she has devised ways to remind herself of sadhana. <clears throat> In the small backyard, there were fresh smelling plants such as lantana as well as the bushes of jasmine and passion flower, no doubt planted by a former tenant, provide the offerings for, to provide the offerings for daily puja to the household gods. There were also planted trees. 
useful not only for their growth but also for their supply of leaf plates, which being fresh at every meal ensures both hygiene and purity by caste Hindus. Wildlife in the form of small pigs would occasionally make an appearance, squeezing back, squeezing under the back gate, scurrying around the garden and intent on their own pursuits. Formerly, deer, bears, and even elephants used to roam freely around Arthachala, as the medieval Periyapuranam relates. But since those days, many wild animals have disappeared. There were still cheetahs and leopards too. And once someone brought a leopard cup to the dispensary to consult Susan on how to rear it, its mother had been shot by the government hunters because leopards from the forest had taken to attacking the lorries flying on the Chengam Road, one of the main commercial arteries of the town. Beyond our back gate, it was open country. Upstairs, on the terrace of our house, there was only one small room, which, situated next to the stair, must have corresponded to the first floor room in the house in Madurai, where Venkatraman attained self-realization. Another nice way to remind oneself of Bhagwan and Sadhana. The first floor had a small room, uh, which looked like the room in which Bhagwan attained liberation in the Madurai home, the first floor room. Susan used that room, the first floor room, for meditation. And it was there that she spent whatever free time she had. Although she lived as a householder, at heart, she was still a homeless wanderer, sincerely detached from material comforts. Often, the only occupant of our drawing room downstairs was one of her patients, an elderly lady who sat with stiff dignity on the city for an hour or so, because Suzanne believed her health would improve if she could get away for a time from her family and family. When Suzanne was upstairs, I would come up to be with her, occupying myself with reading or writing, or else practicing on the terrace with ballet steps she had taught me. Or I would try to acquire the skill of dowsing with the help of a divining rod and a container of water. This detecting of water, the divining of water, came so easily to Susan, my mother, but I showed not much talent for it. I was occasionally watched with some interest by the young Brahmin woman on the opposite rooftop, where she stayed during her unclean days of the month, by tradition not allowed to enter the house proper, where the household deities were kept. Weather permitting, we slept outside the meditation room in the open. As we lay in our beds, the mosquito nets would billow out in the breeze like sails of a boat. The distinctive smell of gold stone, incense, and burning oil reached us from the temple, as did the sounds accompanying the pujas, the bursting of firecrackers, and the music of ritual instruments that rose in a crashing, crashing crescendo at the moment of God's manifestation approached. Those those uh, going of the bells and the harati, she calls at the time when Bhagavan manifests during the puja time. Om Namo Bhagavate Sri Ramana. Namo Ramana. Having been sweetly reminded of Bhagavan's enlightenment and the self inquiry. We go on to the self-enquiry session, which will be conducted by Dilip Singh. Namo Ramana. Dhyaye Charada Chandra Sundara Mukam Tamrara Vinde Bhakta Bhishtavara Bhaya 
ಕರಂ ಕೌಪೀನ ಮಾತ್ರೋಜ್ವಲ ಸ್ವಾತ್ಮಸಾನುಭೂತಿ ದಿವಶ ಸರ್ವಾನವ್ಯಾಂಗಕ ಶ್ರೀಮಂತ ಶ್ರೀರಮಣೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರುವರ ಯೋಗಾಸನಧ್ಯಾಸ ಧ್ಯೇರಮಣೇಶ್ವರ today's evening atma vichara by listening to bhagavan's upadesham as usual i will be reading from guru vachaka kovai from the chapter meditation on the truth and today the topic blessed by bhagavan is knowledge and ignorance verse 536 people of the world you who go running again and again seeking one thing after another believing each to be the ultimate truth the wise course is to investigate that one thing which when investigated results in all other things ceasing to exist i repeat people of the world you who go running again and again seeking one thing after another believing each to be the ultimate truth the wise course is to investigate that one thing which when investigated results in all other things ceasing to exist if we observe our waking state it is nothing but what bhagwan is saying here some thought primarily the first i thought which rises and there upon all other thought rises and makes us believe each to be the ultimate truth and therefore there is such degree of reality attributed to the content of the thought that we run again and again seeking one thing or the other even if we just take this very dialogue that is happening the very explanation that i am trying to make if we de- go to that it is trying to explain the truth itself the in the form of these words but then with this there is this possibility somebody can counter counter argue counter the very notion that i am trying to present here or what bhagwan is also trying to present here therefore very much we could have with this joy the possibility of the pain also that's why bhagwan is saying people of the world you who go running again and again seeking one thing after another believing each to be the ultimate truth the wise course is to investigate that one thing which when investigated results in all other things ceasing to exist so bhagwan is saying the wise course is not to believe in any of these thoughts but to investigate the truth that of that one thing the self when investigated and when found when it is found to be the ever present truth then what results 
is all things will cease all things of differences will cease we will see that one thing alone is and therefore it is a big relief from all the dualistic approaches that is ever ever going to be vulnerable to the ups and downs in the manifestation this is the difference between the knowledge and the ignorance therefore bhagwan asks us that we should diligently question every thought and no matter how many thoughts that may rise we should not worry about why am i having so many thoughts why is these thoughts whether good why is this thought a bad thought that is rising in me in this meditation or in this time we need not have to worry about the quality of the thought or the quantity of the thought all we need to recognize which bhagwan is saying here is the wise course is to investigate to whom is it rising and recognize that it is for me and thereupon who am i by repeatedly questioning the source of the i the first primal division that has happened and going to the self and reaching it re- will in due course ensure that all differences will cease to exist that is the beauty of this direct path of atma vichara which bhagwan has blessed all of us this very atma vichara is the grace of the master coming to us to rescue us from the heat of this division that is continuously haunting us making us believe that they are the ultimate truth he is with his immense grace taking us back to our source with the question with the enquiry to whom is this who am i with the immense grace of bhagwan for the next 10 minutes let us do atma vichara
We now go on to the sharing by Sri Venkatesh Deshpande on the Gita Sara of Bhagavan Sri Ramana Shri. Vasudeva Satam Devam Kansachanura Mardanam Devaki Parmanandam Krishnam Mande Jagadguram Antakaram Bujavishanam Patmanabham Suresham Vishwadharam Gagana Sudrasham Megavaranam Shivangam Lakshmi Kantam Kamarnenam Yogi Rudyana Gamyam Vande Vishnam Bhavayaram Sarvaloka Ikanatham Om Bhagavan's grace, we are doing Manana in Bhagavad Gita Sara. Today we are doing Manana on the 31st verse. I'll ask Sapna to kindly chant this, please. Yes, sir. Ata Shri Bad Bhagavad Gita Saraha Ananya Shinta Yanto Mam Tejana Paryupasate Tesham Nitya Bhiyuktanam Yoga Kshemam Vaham Yaham Ananya Shinta Yanto Mam Tejana Paryupasate Tesham Nitya Bhiyuktanam Yoga Kshemam Vaham Yaham Thank you, sir. Thank you, Sapna. In respect of those devotees who worship me and think of me single-mindedly, for those persons who are constantly united with me, I personally fulfill their personal needs and welfare. Even monks, not to think of devout householders, are anxious and bothered about their future security. They are worried about their old age as to who would feed them and look after them when they become feeble or disabled. The householders argue that, that if they were to be constantly engaged in the worship of God, how they would discharge their responsibilities towards their children, wife, parents, etc. This is a guaranteed assurance from Lord Krishna that in respect of such devotees, God himself will look after their entire welfare at home and personally see that all their personal needs are fulfilled. There is a story to illustrate this aspect. Once a devotee is in dire poverty, had nothing to eat in his house and had to fast perforce for four days consecutively along with all his family members. Unable to bear the taunts of his wife, he took a charcoal piece and cut out the portion Yoga Kshemam Vaham Yaham. I attend to all his needs and welfare in his palm leaf manuscript of Bhagavad Gita. While he went away to take bath in the river, a lovely young boy brought to the house of the devotee in a push cart all the provisions needed for preparing even a feast which would last for an entire year and delivered them to the wife of the devotee saying that they were sent by his master, the lady's husband. That boy had a long blackish gash on his forehead where from blood was oozing out. On being inquired by the lady, he replied, this was due to the punishment inflicted by his master for his tardiness. On the return of her husband, she took him to task 
for his unkind treatment of such a lovely boy. The devotee was shocked and stoutly denied having sent any provisions through a boy. He was overwhelmed with grief when he understood that it was Lord Krishna himself who had personally come as a boy to prove the truth of his guarantee in Bhagavad Gita and that the wound must have been caused by his merciless cutting of the words by a charcoal piece. The author of this commentary had several similar personal experiences in his life as a wandering monk. This verse indirectly refers to the ultimate sadhana, namely complete surrender to the Lord. If we completely surrender ourselves, including our mind solely to, Lord, to God, all our requirements to carry on our life in this world will be provided by the divinity. So many com uh, commentators compare this shloka to a shining gem located right in the middle of the Gita. This quoted shloka contains Ishwara's promise to all devotees. This is something that we need to we need to have total faith on. Contains Ishwara's promise to all devotees. Here Sri Krishna shows us that Ishwara will personally attend to the needs of his devotees. But he also defines the type of devotee that is being discussed here. It is one who is ever absorbed in the contemplation of Ishvara. For such a person or for such people, there is no fear, suffering, sorrow or lack of anything. This shloka describes the nishkama bhakta or desireless devotee. Who is a nishkama bhakta? It is one who is only seeking one thing, that is moksha liberation. His desire for moksha is equal to no other desire, for that desire will permanently eliminate all other desires. It is a desire for infinite or purnatva. He has ananya or focused goal. Other devotees have anya or diverse goals diverse goals. So, if we are all desireless devotees, if our only desire is liberation, which is the attainment of Ishvara, what does Ishvara do for us? Sri Krishna says that Ishvara takes care of yoga and chema. Our entire life comprises of two major activities, acquisition and preservation. The early part of our life goes in acquisition of knowledge, wealth, family, position and title. This is denoted by the word yoga. The later of part of our life is devoted to preservation of what we have acquired. This is Shema. Many commentators cite a wonderful example which we, we, we just read about, about the cutting of the leaf. So the culmination of this shloka's vision is the knowledge there is no such thing as my need or your need. This is a beautiful um, uh, paragraph. The culmination of this shloka's vision is the knowledge that there is no such thing as my need or your need. If everything is Ishwara and everything is in Ishwara, then we all will take, then he will take care of his own needs. Just like our fingers are not worrying about someone taking care of their individual needs. So finally, I, I, I got a nice little um, um, few lines. I thought I'll read this out. The paths leading may, man to God or truth are said to be many. So, the paths leading man to God or truth are said to be many. I will speak only of the shortest. It is to recognize God as the self. This is, we always say, Kuhara Madhye Kevalam Brahma Matram. It is so, this 
the Swamiji also writing the same thing. It is to recognize God as the self in you and then to find him out. So what is the distance? This is a beautiful line. What is the distance then between you and God? Between you and yourself? So what is the distance? There is no distance at all. So we always look for God outside. So what is being said, what is, so we must inquire and say, what is the, when we do self-inquiry, we must inquire, what is the distance then between you and God? Between you and yourself? Ah, there's no difference at all. A full zero. There is no, there's absolutely no difference because Tattvamasi, Tattvamasi is you are that. So there's no dis distance, the distance is up zero. Yet, how dare, the Swamiji writes, how dare you say to find God and truth is hard. We always say that it is very, very hard to find God and truth. But God is actually the distance between you and yourself is zero. So once we truly believe this and we truly, truly, truly surrender to, to Bhagawan and Sri Krishna, then we will be always abiding in the self. Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Ramnaya Jai Shri Krishna. Namo Ramana. Namo Ramana. Thanks, Doctor. Good, Tati. Good. Come on. Thank you. We now, we now have the sharing by Dr. Kalarani Rangaswami on Jnana Vichara Padala Devi Kalotra. Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Ramanaya Arunachalamena Agame Nine Pavar Agatte Vera Rupai Arunachalam. Namo Ramana to all with the abundance grace of Bhagavan Ramana. We are meditating on Devi Kalotra Jnana Vichara Padalam given to us by him. And in the last session we learnt Mamade Indri Karune Manni Saru creeps in along with the thought that it is mine. It is my house, my money, my family, my body. Even a small crack in my house makes me sorrow. I really cannot part with money because I consider it as mine. My family should always be happy. I cannot bear anything wrong happening to them. My body, oh God, it is my first possession. Bhagwan said, I love myself. How considering this body as myself. Knowingly or unknowingly, we have great love for ourselves. I'll tell you an example. We are going for a, let's say, imagine we are going for a function of our kit and kin, say marriage. After one week's time, they send us the photos and videos of that function. In that videos and photos, are we going to search the faces of bride and the bridegroom? Not at all. We will be searching for ourselves only because we love ourselves so much. But are we aware of the true nature of ourselves? That is a big question mark. That is why to come out of this falsehood, Bhagwan says, when we do not consider anything as mine, then the heart will be filled with kindness. We will be ready to part with anything that we have to anyone. And in the next stanza, Bhagwan says, Bhūdangal tamakku yellame abayam tande. No one feel afraid of a person with heart full of kindness. Because you know, we'll always be ready to do good things to others only. So that all can approach him easily. Mamade Indri Karunai Manni Bu 
பூதங்கள் தமக்கு எல்லாமே அபயம் தந்து say for example even for begging arms if a beggar goes to a person who wants to keep everything for himself he may scold the beggar oh fellow you are very healthy go and do some work and earn some money for yourself like that if on the other hand he goes to a person who feels happy to part with his belongings to anyone the beggar need not fear at all going to that person திருவள்ளுவர் எக்வைட் சைன்ட் ஆஃப் தமிழ்நாடு சேஸ் ஊரணி நீர் நிறைந்தே உலகவாம் பேரறிவாழன் திரு இஃப் தெர் இஸ் அ வெல் வித் ட்ரிங்கிங் வாட்டர் அட் தி சென்டர் ஆஃப் தி வில்லேஜ் ஆல் கேன் யூஸ் தி வாட்டர் வித்வுட் எனி ஹெசிடேஷன் அண்ட் வித்வுட் எனி ஃபியர் தட் சம்மன் வில் கம் அண்ட் ஸ்கோல் தெம் லைக் வைஸ் இஃப் great wealth is possessed by a person who is kind hearted ready to help others that wealth is like a well at the center of the village anyone can approach him for help at any time he will be ready with a smiling face to help them and no need to get fear of him bhagwan says this is the state of Mumukshu. Mumukshu does not claim anything as this. They will concentrate only on seeking mukti. They will not have any itcha other than mukti or moksha. Bhagwan says, don't stop by only helping others. Don't think that it is enough that you are doing good things. don't stop there itself have great icha for mukti aspire for mukti with this aspiration learn devi kalotra and follow it with a great devotion don't have any oscillation in the mind don't allow the mind to go out instead with full concentration bhakti follow what is said in devi kalotra because when the mind goes out means the concentration for attaining mukti will be lost that's why bhagwan says yega vali nirka isaindu stick on to one marga then only you can find progress say for example if a man wants to get water from the ground will it be okay if he is digging at 10 different places no not at all he has to dig deep in one place then only he can find water likewise concentrate on one marga and that is what is said in devi kalotra gnana vichara padalam follow that and that will lead to our destination yeka vali nirka isaindu Bhagwan says when we want to get out of the tension and the anxiety of our mind we have to give the mind karuna as a medicine when karuna enters one's heart there will be no anxiety at all because karuna makes the mind shanti makes the mind calm because when karuna is there forgiveness automatically comes in one is ready to forgive anything naturally their shanti only will provide say for example in in someone does which i don't like at all i will not get tensed at all because forgiveness will be there there is no more tension and anxiety at that stage any work will be done with puranatvam with great concentration whole heartedly the work has to be done bhagwan says that is why bhagwan says isaind nirka do it with happiness we do it with full concentration do it with happiness and when this concentrated mind will be will there then naturally we uh, automatically the truth will be realized and it has to be the sadhana has to be undertaken with happy mind without any doubt without 
without any oscillation let us do this sadhana whole heartedly om namo bhagavate shri ramanaya Ramana. We now have the sharing by Sri Ujwal Jagadish on Ganapati Muni's Ramana Chatvarimsha. Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Ramanaya. Ramane Nasanatamidam. ರಮಣೇನ ಸನಾತನಿದ ಭುವನ ರಮಣೇನ ಸನಾತನಿದ ಭುವನ ರಮಣೇನ ಸನಾತನಿದ ಭುವನ ಭಗವತ್ ಭಗವತ್ಪದ ಮನ್ಯಜನಾಸುಲಭ ಸ್ವಗುಣೈರಧಿಗತ್ಯ ಪರಂ ಜಯತ ಭಗವತ್ಪದ ಮನ್ಯಜನಾಸುಲಭ ಸ್ವಗುಣೈರಧಿಗತ್ಯ ಪರಂ ಜಯತ ಮಮತಾರಹಿತೇನ ಹಿತೇನ ಸಿಹಿತೇನ ಗಣ ಪ್ರಗುಣ ಹೃದಯ ಭಗವತ್ ಮೇಲೆ ಅನ್ಯ ಜನರಿಗೆ ದುರ್ಲಭ ತನ್ನ ಗುಣ ಮಹಿಮೆಯಿಂದ ಪರಮ ಪದ ಗೆದ್ದವ ದಿಸ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ದ ನೈನ್ತ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ರಮಣ ಚತ್ವಾರಿಂಶತ್ ವಿಚ್ ಬೀನ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಟು ನೀಲಾಂಬರಿ ರಾಗ ಬೈ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಸುಲೋಚನಾ ನಟರಾಜನ್ ದ ನೀಲಾಂಬರಿ ರಾಗ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಯು ಯೂಶಲಿ ಯೂಸ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಲಬಿ ವೇರ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಿಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಲಲಬಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಲಿಟಲ್ child going to sleep in the tamil tradition there is usually this uh, the words rro ariraro which is used and this rro the spiritual significance of these words which are used in dalavi is to say who are you rro who are you are you hari or are you hara who are you these are the significance of those words asking the child to recognize its own divinity and ramana also says sadhu swami in one of his songs gives the teaching of ramana says thoongi irundidavai thoongamal thoongi irundidavai to sleep without sleeping the jagrata sushupti which ramana calls it it is that raga which brings out that jagrata sushupti which takes us back to our own divinity and ganapati muni says ramana is the one who has attained that supreme state of divinity which is which people think it is asulabha which is very very difficult to attain for anya jana for other people it seems to be very very difficult this difficult state ramana has attained and how has he attained he has attained by his own virtues swagunai radhi gatya param jayata he has won that supreme state by his own virtues and uh, the, the shankar narayan who has written the commentary on this uh, ramana chatvarimshat he says that this the in the vishnu purana there is a shloka which t- talks about the significance of the word bhaga from the bhagavat pada he says that the great saints and sages they may be given yati as the name they may be given as rishi muni and suri these are the usual used names but ramana alone ganapati muni saw that he is divinity manifest so he gave the name bhagavan shri ramana maharshi he gave this title bhagavan and he says there are these six qualities which are there for the person who is entitled this title bhagavan and what are those qualities he says aishwaryasya samagrasya 
he should be the owner of the whole universe and he should be viryasya he should be valarus and he should be yashasah he should be famous and he should have shriyah he should have all the wealth and he should have jnana and vairagya these are the six qualities which when we see bhagavan ramana he is filled with all these qualities he was the one who the whole world belong to he asked ganapati muni who am i if the whole the all the sun and the moon and other stars and the planets are going around my waist who am i then so he is the owner of the whole universe ramana and he is valorous he faced the, the fear of death and won over it he is the valorous one and fame he is the one uh, murugana swami says yelle hogali alli ninnade gunaganada male suriyutide ramana is the self who is famous all around the universe and when we talk about shri he is shrimanta because the whole universe belongs to him and he does not have any want kabir says the shahanshah is the one who does not desire anything and ramana is the epitome of that shahanshah uh, with whom the all the shri all the wealth abide and he is the epitome of jnana and vairagya and but ramana does not consider these gunas as required to attain that parama pada he say in his atma vidya kirtanam which is translated into kannada by dr lakshmi anabatta he says the most important virtue that one need to have is atma gnana yenito sulabhaye nu saralavo shraddhayinda tiliya baruva janare viralavo the only virtue that we need to have to realize our divinity here and now is to have shraddha and ramana says if one has the shraddha love towards that divinity which is our own true nature when searches mills in love and searches for that divinity in the deep recesses of our heart there the divine is waiting for us as the beloved to unite with us and give us his own state of divinity to us and bhagwan ramana through this shraddha through this bhakti through his love towards arunachala who was a self he attained the very state arunachala and he is shining there as the bhagavan as the lord of arunachala to give us this very state and what what is the virtue bhagwan says we need to have we need to have the shraddha and bhagwan is bhagwan he is the god who can give us all that we desire so we need to pray to that bhagwan himself to fill us with that shraddha to attain that parama pada which he himself shines gloriously ओम नमो भगवते श्रीरमणाय नमो रमण प्रोस्ट्रेशन टू रमण शाइनिंग एज अ सेल्फ इन ऑल बींग्स बाय द ग्रेस ऑफ दैट सेल्फ मैनिफेस्ट इज रमण वी आर मेडिटेटिंग ऑन द रमण अष्टोत्तर ಶತನಾಮಾವಳಿ ಕಂಪೋಸ್ ಬೈ ವಿಶ್ವನಾಥ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆನ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ರಮಣ ಅಷ್ಟೋತ್ತರ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ತ್ ಅಪಾನ್ ದ ಧ್ಯಾನ ಶ್ಲೋಕ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಆನ್ ದ ನಾಮಸ್ ಓಂ ಮಹಾಸೇನ ಮಹುಂಷೇನ ಜಾತ ರಮಣೋ ಗುರು ರಮಣ ಗುರು ಅಖಂಡ ಸಂವಿಧಾಕಾರ ಮಹೌಜ ಕಾರಣೋದ್ಭವ ಜಗತ್ಪಿತಾವತಾರ ಭೂಮಿನಾಥ ಸ್ಥಲೋತ್ಪಿ ಪರಾಶರಕುಲೋತ್ತಮ ಸಹ ಸುಂದರಾರ್ಯ ತಪಫಲಂ ಇವರು ದ ನಾಮ ಆಫ್ ಸುಂದರಾರ್ಯ ತಪಫಲಂ ವಿಶ್ವನಾಥ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಓ ರಮಣ ಯು ಆರ್ ದಿ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ತಪಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸುಂದರಮಯ್ಯರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಾಧು ಓಂ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಇನ್ ಹೀಸ್ ಲಲಬಿ ಟು ಭಗವಾನ್ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ಹಿ ಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಅರುತಿ ಸುಂದರ ಅಳಗಂ ಮೈ ತವ ವಾಳ್ಕ್ಷಮಿಲ್ ಕನಿಂದ ಸೋ ಹೀಸ್ ದಟ್ ಫ್ರೂಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ವ ಮೇ ತಾಲೆ 
You are that fruit, he says. That fruit which has come on the tree of tapas, there he says, of Sundaran and Aragamma. Arutigal Sundaran, Aragammai Tabavalva Viksham. In that life of tapasya, the life of righteousness, that tree of Sundaramayar and Aragamma has borne the fruit of Ramana, he says. You are that fruit. So in, that might have been inspired by Vishwanatha Swami's saying, Sundararya Tapapalam. You are the fruit of Sundararya's Tapasya. And we also dwelt last time as to how Sundaram Ayer was the epitome of goodness. He is the epitome of love and goodness. And uh, he was good to everybody, including even to the robbers of those days. That's what we learn. And we learn that the robbers at those times, in those times, had the uh, uh, dharma for themselves. They also had some rules and regulations based on which they did their, carried their, carried forth their profession. And that was that they would inform people or they would have respect for certain people and live in obedience to those people. And the robbers around Tirichuri had great regard for Sundaram Ayer. We have two, three episodes uh, related to the robbers of Tirichuri just to show that Sundaram Ayer's love was, it was equal to all. He was goodness personified, but that goodness was so sweet that he did not judge anybody else as being evil or wrong or bad. Because if he had even as an iota of uh, pride in his own goodness or a thought that he was following the goodness as a sort of a wow, then he would have looked down upon the others who were not living in accordance with these norms, but he did not do so. At the same time, he was very conscious of the right and the wrong. That is the beauty. There is an incident where uh, a person in the police force in Tirichuri, his house was robbed. And uh, some of the very precious jewels of his wife, those jewels to which she was sentimentally attached, even those jewels were stolen when the house was robbed. Now, the wife of that police officer came to know from the people of Tirichuri that the robbers held Sundaram Ayer in great regard. And if Sundaram Ayer puts in a word, the robbers might return the booty. However, her husband felt it was below his dignity to approach anyone for help, himself being a police officer. So he did, did his best to try and find the thieves and to find the booty. But with the passing of every day, his wife got increasingly worried and anxious that if the thieves disposed of the booty, it would be impossible to retrieve it. So she persuaded him to approach Sundaram Ayer. Now Sundaram Ayer, it was a difficult situation for him. At the same time, he said that as the police officer has approached him, he cannot deny his help. And what he did was something very simple. He simply spoke to a few people saying that what the thieves did was not right. You know, he let his thoughts on the subject be known in such a manner that it would reach the ears of the thieves, of the decoy, of the robbers. And his point was that the, he said that the robbers shouldn't have robbed a police officer. 
He said, when robbery happens in the home of a police officer, it disturbs the minds of the entire people. Because they say that, okay, when a police officer is not able to take care of his own house, how will he take care of us? And such thoughts arise in the mind of the people. So the robbers have done a really wrong thing by robbing the house of a police officer. They have crossed their line of decorum, their own lines of right and wrong by doing this. This was the opinion which he shared, which Sundara Mayer shared with people. And it reached the ears of the robbers. And the robbers then sent a message to him apologizing for their action and saying that they would return the booty. And Sundara Mayer had already told the police officer that he would not indicate to him who the robbers were or where they were situated, but would only try and get back what was lost. So Sundara Mayer arranged for the material to be left at the doorstep of the police officer's house, and that's how he got the material back. This story indicates the the regard which the robbers had for Sundara Mayer. It also indicates how beautifully he understands the the role play of the different people. His subtle understanding of dharma, wherein he says to the robbers that they should not rob the house of the police because it disturbs the, the minds of the people. So they can rob in a situation where people expect to be robbed in the forest, in the uh, where they lay ambush, and that's how they did to the magistrate. And when he was traveling to Tiruchuri, having overtaken Sundara Mayer's cart, but then Sundara Mayer came to that spot, and hearing the sound of his bullock cart, which they recognized, the robbers dropped all the case files which they had robbed and other things which they had taken from the magistrate and went away from that spot because of the regard, again, which they had for Sundara Mayer. And the magistrate also understood in what high regard Sundara Mayer was held by all the people alike because of his kindness, his justice and his kindness and his love for everyone alike. So that was the tapasya. This is one of the tapas that, that Sundara Mayer performed. One of the penances which Sundara Mayer performed was to be loving and kind and just. And from this, the fruit of jnana was born, says Vishwanatha Swami to us. Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Ramanaya. We will conclude today's satsang with the chanting of Aksharamana Malay verses by Radha and Valla, followed by the Ashtotra Puja to Bhagavan. It will be performed by Ujwal today. And the chanting will be by Vaibhavji, Prathana, Uma and Ashwini. And the uh, Arati song will also be sung by Ujwal. Om Namo Bhagavate Shri Ramanaya. Aruna Chala Shiva, Aruna Chala Shiva, Aruna Chala Shiva, Aruna Chala, Aruna Chala Shiva, Aruna Chala Shiva, Aruna Chala Shiva, Aruna Chala, Koba Milguna Toy, Uriya, Yene Kula Kura Yen Chiden, Aruna Chala. Gautamarpotrum karunai mamalaye Kadakadi thalvayaruna chala Sakalamum vidangum kadironi inamana jala jamala Thiraruna chala 
ಶ್ರೀರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ತಪಕ್ಷಪಿತ ಸರ್ವಾಂಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಹುಲ್ಲಾಂಬುಜ ವಿಲೋಚನಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಚಂದ್ರಿಕಾಸ ಶ್ರೀ ಮಂತ್ರಿತಾನನ ಮಂಡಲಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಚೂತವಾಟ್ಯಾಂ ಸಮಾಸೀನಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಚೂಡಿತಾಖಿಲ ವಿಭ್ರಮಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ವೇದ ವೇದಾಂತ ತತ್ವಜ್ಞಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಚಿನ್ಮುದ್ರಿಣೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ತ್ರಿಗುಣಾತಿ ಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ವಿರೂಪಾಕ್ಷ ಗುಹಾವಾಸಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ವಿರಾಜದ ಚಲಾಕೃತ ಯೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಉದೀತನಯನಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಪೂರ್ಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ರಚಿತಾಚಲ ತಾಂಡವಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಗಂಭೀರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಪರಮಾಚಾರ್ಯಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸುಪ್ರಸನ್ನಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಅಭಯ ಪ್ರದಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಸ್ಯ ನಿಭಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಧೀರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಭಿಮುಖಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸ್ವರಾಜೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಮಹರ್ಷಯೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಭಗವತೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಈದ್ಯಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಭೂಮ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ವಿಶಾರದಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ವಿಮಲಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ದೀರ್ಘದರ್ಶಿನೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಆಪ್ತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಋಜುಮಾರ್ಗ ಪ್ರದರ್ಶಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸಮದೃಶೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸತ್ಯದೃಶೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸತ್ಯಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಪ್ರಶಾಂತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಅಮಿತ ವಿಕ್ರಮಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸುಕುಮಾರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸದಾನಂದಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಮೃದುಭಾಷಿಣೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ದಯಾಳ್ನವಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಶೋಣಾಚಲ ಹೃದ್ಭೂತ ಸ್ಕಂದಾಶ್ರಮ ನಿಕೇತನಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸದ್ಭರ್ಷರೋಪದೇಷ್ಟೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸದ್ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಪರಿವೃತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಗಣೇಶ ಮುನಿ ಭೃಂಗೇರ ಸೇವಿತಾಗ್ರಿ ಸರೋರುಹಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಗೀತೋಪದೇಶ ಸಾರಾದಿ ಗ್ರಂಥ ಸಂಚಿನ್ನ ಸಂಶಯಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ವರ್ಣಾಶ್ರಮ ಮತಾಧೀತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ರಸಜ್ಞಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸೌಮ್ಯಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಆತ್ಮವತೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸರ್ವಾವರಿ ಮತಸ್ಥಾನ ಆರಾಧ್ಯಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸರ್ವಸದ್ಗುಣಿನೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಆತ್ಮಾರಾಮಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಮಹಾಭಾಗಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಮಾತೃಮುಕ್ತಿ ವಿಧಾಯಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ವಿನತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ವಿನುತಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ವಿಪ್ರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಮುನೀಂದ್ರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಪಾವಕೋಜ್ವಲಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ದರ್ಶನಾದಗ ಸಂಹಾರಿಣೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಮೌನೇನ ಸ್ವಾತ್ಮಬೋಧಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಮೃಚ್ಛಾಂತಿಕರ ಸಾನ್ನಿಧ್ಯಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸ್ಮರಣಾತ್ ಬಂಧ ಮೋಚಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಅಂತಸ್ತಿಮಿರ ಚಂಡಾಂಶವೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸಂಸಾರಾರ್ಣವತಾರಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶೋಣಾಧೀಶ ಸ್ತುತಿ ದ್ರಷ್ಟೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಹಾರ್ದ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ಪ್ರಕಾಶಕಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಅವಿಚ್ಯುತ ನಿಜ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ನೈಸರ್ಗಿಕ ಮಹಾತಪಸೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಕಮಂಡರುಧರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಶುಭ್ರ ಕೌಪೀನ ವಸನಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಗುಹಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ದಂಡಪಾಳಯೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಕೃಪಾಪೂರ್ಣಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಭವರೋಗ ಬಿಷಗ್ವರಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸ್ಕಂದಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ದೇವತಮಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಅಮರ್ತ್ಯಾಯ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಸೇನಾನ್ಯೇ ನಮಃ ಓಂ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮಾಯ ನಮಃ Thank you.
नमो 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 रमण सदा शिव प्रभा वरण नमो महर्षि नमो महर्षि दर्शन सुख मंगल मुख सकन जीव हित सम्मुख ब्रह्म संगीय नमो 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 रमण सदा शिव प्रभा वरण नमो महर्षि नमो महर्षि सदा तुष्ट सदा हृष्ट सदा शिवानंद पुष्ट परम महर्षि ब्रह्म निष्ठ समदर्शी नमो 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 रमण सदा शिव प्रभा वरण नमो महर्षि नमो महर्षि नम मन बंदु काड़ु नीन रिति अदर जाड़ु गीत बद रितु नीड़ु तेम ಬೇಡಲೆಂದು ಬಂದ ನಾವು ನೋಡಿಯೇ ತಣಿವೆ ವೈಯ ಮೋಡಿದಾರನೆ ಹಿತ ನುಡಿದು ಪೊರೆ ನಮ್ಮನು ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸಂಘಿಯೇ ನಮೋ 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 ರಮಣ ಸದಾ ಶಿವ ಪ್ರಭಾವರಣ ನಮೋ ಮಹರ್ಷಿ ನಮೋ ಮಹರ್ಷಿ ಬೋಲೋ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಶ್ರೀರಮಣ ಮಹರ್ಷಿ ಜೈ 